Never stop blasting test because the longer you blast it for, the easier it is to come off. Always avoid blood work. And when it comes to injecting, ignore all the numbers on the barrel. Just fill the whole thing up. Guys, why are we not doing things safely from the start? Why are we making things so complicated when it comes to a first cycle? Because health is number one, isn't it? And instead of spending all our effort and energy thinking about the compounds that we're gonna use and thinking about all the side effects we're gonna potentially fight off even before we've got them, and we're gonna have to use other drugs to fight off those side effects, why don't we instead use that energy to understand what a first cycle is actually about? Now, the goal of your first cycle is simple. Find out your sweet spot, test off dosage and perhaps the dosage and sweet spot of another second compound or the third compound but most importantly do all of this without risking your short-term and long-term health you are now setting yourself up to have a first cycle with no side effects and be in complete control all the time you literally will laugh in the face at those baboons that tell you you're risking your health on steroids you're gonna kill yourself a zero gain now you can decide to apply this information that I've got coming up or you can decide to stay natty like my co-trend. I mean my co-hern. Step one, find your natural testosterone levels. Go and get your blood hormone panel done. Go down the doctor, go to a clinic. Do this all pre-cycle before you hit the gear, the opposite of what most guys do. Why is it important to do this? Because if your natural testosterone levels are around about 900 to 1500, and you then start taking around about 150 to 200 milligrams of test per week, it's not likely to give you the results that you want. Therefore, the higher your natural test levels are, the more testosterone you're going to need from the start. Because if you're someone who has naturally high test levels and you start putting in 150 to 200 of test sip per week, it's pointless. You're just going to be shutting down your own natural production of testosterone and not getting the benefits and the gains that you would do if you had it higher. But on the other hand, if your natural test levels are sub 400 pre-cycle and you start hitting test sip at 150 milligrams a week, you are going to have fantastic results. And if you hit two to 500 milligrams of test per week, oh my God, Jesus you're gonna grow so quick. Step two, understand the day-to-day -day process. Quick things to consider before you just dive in. Where are you gonna get it? Find a legit source. Is it legal in your country? Is the source reliable? Is the actual product legit? And is your source consistent? Supplements, do you have the supplements already in and understand them to complement your training, your recovery, and your diet? Injection protocol, have you got access to the barrels? Do you know the process? Do you know you're actually withdrawing it with the green and putting it in with an orange or a blue? Or are you gonna backload an insulin syringe? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Because infections come to those who don't prepare. Nutrition is different to being a natty. On cycle, you've gotta eat. You've gotta take advantage of the way that the gear has altered your physiology and that's the way your body will process the food so you're completely different now your diet must change because if you're natty and you're thinking oh if I eat a lot of food on gear i'm gonna get fat no you won't that's your limited natty mindset from before you want to get rid of that make sure you know how to train make sure you have a program that's designed for someone who is enhanced i've done a complete video on this and it's training natty versus enhanced it's going to give you all the information you need i'll put that at the end of this video now we're on to step three and it's time to actually start injecting the testosterone woohoo we're going to start the gear finally we don't start high and taper even higher we start low and then taper higher. You're probably thinking, why do I need to do this? Because we need to assess your ability to aromatize. And that's the conversion of androgen, testosterone, to estrogen, estradiol. Because estrogen plus water retention is gonna give you what? High blood pressure. Just a tip for high blood pressure, an ACE inhibitor or magnesium or Cialis is gonna help. Once again, we're gonna do the opposite of what most guys do on cycle and try and avoid using an AI. An AI simply reduces the estrogen conversion when we're supplementing the external testosterone because AIs are poor for blood glucose and they're very neurotoxic. Although we don't wanna use an AI though, it's recommended that you have one on hand 
Now, I suggest you use Aramacin instead of Letrozole because the Letro will suppress your lipids a lot compared to Aramacin. Then we increase the dosage over time. Just like in the gym, we progressively overload on the weights, so we progressively overload on the dosage of testosterone as we go along in the cycle. Now, if you're wondering, some of my clients find 300 milligrams of test per week is enough, and other clients find that 600 milligrams a week is their sweet spot. But listen, the difference between 300 milligrams of test and 600 milligrams of test a week is not a one-to-one -one of gains ratio. Just because you're doubling the dosage does not mean you're going to get double the gains. I wish it did work like that, but it doesn't. And in certain individuals, it does just lead to more and more side effects. How much do you increase the dosage? Well, it's best to increase the dosage one gram a month. No, it's not. <laughs> it is best to progress it up 100 milligrams to 150 milligrams every four to six weeks. Again, the goal is to find the lowest or the minimum effective dosage for the maximum gains and the least amount of side effects possible. That is the goal of your first cycle. Always remember this. When do we evaluate the dosage? When the aromatization starts getting too much and you start to see symptoms of high estrogen. High blood pressure, nipple sensitivity, you're moody all the time, you've got some oily skin leading to acne, maybe you've got some gyno developing. Make sure you nip this in the bud early if you have any symptoms. Use that AI that I said to have on hand just in case some of these symptoms crop up. And you can reverse it very quickly using the correct AI. What is the general testosterone sweet spot dosage though? From first-hand experience, the best place to start is generally around about 300 milligrams per week. Fellas, quick break to like the video. Let's blast this out to the universe. Let the algorithm do its thing. Like, comment as well, fellas. We want to get this protocol for a first cycle out to as many people as possible so they can get the gains, look amazing, but also not mess up their health. Step four, introduce a second compound. At this point, it's also advised to get blood work done again before you add the second compound in. It's wise to do this for two things, to see how the testosterone has affected your body and also to see what specific compound is going to suit you based on your blood work. If you've got liver issues, I wouldn't go on any orals. If you look at your RBC levels and they're high, increase your cardio and maybe go and donate blood. And don't be taking EQ, Primabolin or Trend. If your lipids have gone up, add in some citrus bergamot, some fish oils, some soluble fibers, and also maybe need to change your diet around. And it's wise to do all that first when you get a blood test back before you add in that second compound. Because if you don't do this, you might add a compound in that's not suitable for you. Let's say your lipids are high and you add in Mastron, Winnie, Tren, Anavar, they really mess up your lipid profiles. When you're looking at your compounds, think, what is your goal? What is the characteristic of the steroid? All the steroids make you look different. Find that look that you want and then proceed to add it to the test. For example, I love the look on Deca, but I do not love the look on Tren. Then repeat the process for figuring out your sweet spot dosage that I said before for the test for that second compound and perhaps a third compound. The first cycle is all about setting yourself up to have a good relationship with the testosterone and the other PEDs. So you have an awesome cycle, get the results you want and don't risk your health. Let me show you a recent beginner client cycle. 300 milligrams of test. We did this for 12 weeks and after six weeks we added some T-bowl in. He gained around about 16 pounds of mass. Other clients decide then to get their blood work done and go for forward into another phase. Perhaps go forward into a 16 week cutting phase, adding in primabolin and HGH. And obviously the test base is always in there. So that's a 28 week cycle and it's safe. Getting your blood work done before, during and after. And that is how you get five years of results in six months and stay healthy. And then when you've got your gains, the option there is potentially go to a PCT, which is coming off the test, or you hit a muscle retention dosage, which is 200 to 300 milligrams of test per week, depending on the individual, or you go and drop it even more and go down to a TRT dosage, which is between 70 milligrams a week and 100 milligrams a week. All these options are dependent on the client's goals or whatever you want to achieve. Because I'm guessing you don't want to be a professional bodybuilder. I'm guessing you just want to feel 18 forever and have an awesome physique and not risk your health. So the key thing here from this video is you have to be flexible and know what you're doing in your first cycle. We have to adjust the dosage 
doses as we go through, but we must start low and look for that minimum effective dosage. Because the cycle is only as good as the results and the development that you actually get from the PEDs. There's no point doing a cycle if you just get a ton of side effects and you have a negative relationship with testosterone and steroids forever. And then you go into the comments and say, oh, the steroids is gonna ruin your life, you're gonna die early. Because what happens if it all starts going wrong? You get high blood pressure, you develop gyno, you start getting water retention. What are you gonna do? Search on Google for the answer or you're gonna employ a coach then? Coaching link in description. <coughs> so if you haven't liked this video, do it now. I've got another video coming up that's gonna help you understand how to train when you enhance versus natty. It's completely different. Let's go and I'll see you next week.